you know, we, we had an episode just recently about expectations more or less, and this will set, this document will set so many of the expectations for your customer and for working with you. And we've actually, what was this? What was the, I forget, you didn't talk about the company, but there was a builder that had the expectations document with their subcontractors. You remember what I'm talking about, Martin? Oh yeah. I don't have it on my desk. I know where it you is. You called it a positioning, but, but you called it a positioning uh, it, document. Yeah. It, it said, this is what you can expect from us. You know, our jobs will always be ready on time. No callbacks yeah. or dry runs. We'll pay you on the 15th of every month. If you give us the invoice by this anyway, it laid out what we do. Then yep. it said what we expect from you. And yep. there are a number of things, but the one I liked the most was do your own inspections. Do not rely on us to do QC. I yep. mean, that one was great. No, we're not coming in there. We find a bunch of problems after you QC the job. That's on you, buddy. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so it lays out the expectation. Well, I think that's basically what this is. You're, you're the expectations section of your ultimate buyer's guide should cover everything that you want to expect from your customer, but also that your customer can expect from you in terms of behavior. Communication is a huge one of how long it's going to take to hear back from you, to get a reply, what channels to be communicating on, if it's email, text, phone call, um, all those different things, payment, contracts, changes to the job, errors on the job, interruptions to the job, just everything that you can think of that you want to set some ground rules for is in this section. And then there's questions that come along with that. And it should be on both sides from you to the homeowner or to the, the, the customer and from the homeowner to you. What are the expectations? Again, just having that in place doesn't have to just be in the ultimate gut buyer's guide. That can be in your contracts. It can be in your, your marketing. Uh, it can be on your, your first sales call just as a separate document. These are the expectations that we have. Uh, and again, just going through that exercise is super beneficial. Yeah. On, on that, from an internal use, uh, it was occurring to me this morning, when I start with a company that has been around a while, it does have processes and they're seldom written down. Just so-and-so knows how to do this. And somebody else knows how to do that. But when we're starting to map them, I think of a, I've got an eight foot whiteboard in my conference room. You just draw a horizontal line across that and say, we got to start somewhere and let's start with an inbound phone call or a form, right? Yeah. We, we could start with marketing, but I'm not going to do that. We just start there and then just ask them what happens next. I've got a yeah. phone call. What happens next? You know, does it go into the CRM? Does it go to somebody? Do you, do they get an automatic reply? Anyway, as you march across the page or across the, that line with people saying, well, the next thing is it's got to go to purchasing. No, the next thing it's got to go to engineering, you know, whatever it is, people will start seeing where they're duplicating efforts and where things are going forward and then going back. Anyway, you'll start to see things you can begin to design. So that's not a huge benefit to the buyer directly, other than if you're a better company, you're going to be a better experience. But that is a great way to flesh out the buyer's guide, but also to understand your systems and processes and getting it started and being organized. 